Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. So just uh, just wait for one or two minutes. I'm going. To okay. Go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just wait for and, uh, for uh, your indication. Okay. Just just wait. There is some disturbance uh, in the network. So because okay. I'm I'm just uh, listening. So many so many echoes are coming. <laughs> so just uh, let me talk with my technical team and I'll I'll, I'll get back to you. Okay. 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 I'll oh, wait. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> Hello, good morning, everyone. I welcome all our participants and our resource person to our day five of international webinar on migration and human trafficking. It is our privilege to welcome to Dr. Armando Moctezuma Suarez from the University of Nuevo Leon, Mexico. It is my privilege to introduce Armando mm -hmm. because he is one of my scholar and he wrote his master's thesis under my guidance and uh, currently he is pursuing his PhD in the university. Armando has done, a, done lots of work on human trafficking in Mexico and he has published more than five in, uh, in uh, articles in different international journals. Also, we have two books um, he collaborated with me in two books on human trafficking in Mexico. Also, he has collaborated in various projects in Mexico on, on the issues of human migration and human trafficking. Armando has delivered lectures and the conference in the United States and in various parts of Mexico. And recently, he participated, he was invited by the Human Rights Commission of Mexico to deliver a lecture on the problem of human trafficking in, in Mexico and in United States. So today he is going to present 
on representation of human trafficking in Mex Mexican mass media and its complexity on law enforcement. So it's going to be very interesting to listen to how the Mexican print media or the mass media represents the problems of human trafficking in the country and how it is creating a complex situation on the impl uh, implementation of law in throughout the Mexican territory. So I welcome Armando to our university, to Sambalpur University. And it is our privilege to listen to you. Armando, Google Meet is up, up to you. Well, uh, thank you everyone so much for your introduction. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm, I am really proud to be one of your students here in, in Mexico under your guidance. It's, there's a lot of things that I have learned uh, with you. <laughs> And good mo good morning to all of you in India. Good, uh, good night uh, to all of you from from Mexico. So, uh, so let's uh, let's start with the presentation. Um, <clears throat> it's um, uh, this work. It's mostly from an article uh, that Dr. Arun, uh, a colleague of us, and and I. Uh, published in the Journal of Feminist Gender and Women's Studies uh, with the same title, Representations of Human Trafficking in Mexican Mass Media and its Complexity on, on, law, uh, on Law Enforcement. Uh, as well as all over the world, also in Mexico, human trafficking has received attention over the past two decades in politics, academia, as well as in media that is to its uh, multi-facet consequence and also to, uh, because of uh, multi-facet uh, uh, or origins. Uh, today there is a recognition that women, children and men are trafficking into many different forms of labor uh, besides uh, for sexual exploitation. Uh, but uh, at the beginning it was mostly uh, Focus on sexual in in still today is, is mainly focused on on sexual exploitation. So <clears throat> now, in consequence, human uh, trafficking or or trafficking in person and mother slavery are terms often used uh, in interchangeably to refer to a variety of crimes associated with economic exploitation uh, of people. Uh, so th there is a, a, a confusion or, or it's used uh, as, as the same uh, concepts uh, talking ab about exploitation and, and human trafficking. We will explore this further during the presentation. Even when the International Labor Organization estimates that 2.5 million people uh, worldwide, worldwide are being trafficked at any given time, uh, for, uh, for forty-three percent for trafficking victims are used for commercial and sexual exploitation. Uh, Thirty-two percent are used for uh, forced economic exploitation, and around uh, twenty-five percent of victims are used for a combination of forced exploitation and commercial sexual exploitation, or on on their uh, on their main reasons. Uh, even when many organizations such as EOM, ILO, GAATW, CATW, and ECPTA uh, uh, have drawn concern uh, to, to uh, make the Mexican government uh, through its reports and publications and, and, so, and social work, uh, they're still uh, Unmet uh, goals and uh, and uh, and, <clears throat> and policy implementations uh, from uh, from the Mexican government and also from uh, lo local authorities. Even when Mexico is considered uh, a, a place of origin, transit, and destination country for human trafficking. Um, we must sell some uh, context about uh, human trafficking and exploitation in, in Mexico. 
during the pre-Hispanic period, uh, we can uh, talk about uh, some forms of uh, slavery uh, associated uh, with, uh, uh, with the customs of the indigenous uh, tribe during the, the pre-Hispanic period, uh, where uh, men were uh, captured and sold as uh, soldiers and farm laborers, and women uh, were also sold as uh, concubines or, 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 or companions. Uh, while during the time of, uh, of colonizations, uh, during the time of colonization, the uh, the Spaniard uh, used uh, forced labor of uh, of indigenous uh, in order to construct uh, the the New Spain colony, and also uh, in. In, in less in less extension, African people were brought to Mexico as, as slaves. And during the uh, the twentieth century, uh, twentieth century, human trafficking in Mexico has been closely related to prostitution and and sex work. In addition to sex trafficking, another growing problem in the nation is trafficking of men and women for labor exploitation, uh, mostly in uh, for, for agricultural uh, work and in, in so, and in some uh, work workshops and sweatshops. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, for example, across uh, across the border in the Valley of San Quentin in Baja California. Where where many uh, Mexicans had been uh, had been trafficked for labor exploitation, and also the Mexican children are forced from their homes due to economic issues to send to work in the sex industry in Mexican tourist centers, such as Cancun, Acapulco, and border cities like Juarez and Tijuana. <laughs> so. Uh, so, uh, regarding the media, uh, media misrepresentation of human trafficking in Mexico, we must depart from it, from uh, two main uh, from two main aspects. Uh, the first, from Umberto Eco's extends extends on the role of mass media on societal change and virtue positions on the media's socially created role. Uh, <clears throat> And Burgess, hmm. and Burgess position on the media as secretary rule. Therefore, we must always analyze the media taking into account its ability to control uh, society and masses. In Mexico, as in other parts of the world, in information technology and mass communication play an important role in policy decisions, public opinion, and in the most important topics in the social sphere. In this country, there are certain singularities in mass media, as there is an oligopoly on journalism and opinion at national level, which is more clear and evident at local levels. These olig oligopolistic practices are rooted on the historical partnership of dominant power groups with economic and political interests to which this information that is communicated and even generated by the mass media has to be a reflection of the establishment of course. We can identify uh, some types uh, of, uh, of biases in the terminology used by the media. Uh, we can, the, the first one, do not explain the, the phenomena and confuse the types uh, of trafficking, referring, referring to human trafficking as the slavery of the 21st century, referring it to that uh, as sex trade. An illegal, an illegal business, human trafficking network, slavery, and exploitation of human beings. The type two misrepresentation of the phenomena use uh, anachronic terms such as white slave traffic, which is no longer used, uh, or sexual exploitation, uh, sexual slavery, and forced uh, sex work. The type three 
do not differ differentiate between types of trafficking and types of exploitation. Uh, so it's the one of the most common um, representation is which confuse trafficking with the sole exploitation. And that the type four do, does not reflect the variety of the complexity of human trafficking form, in which only refers or mostly refers to, se to sex trafficking and does not talk about uh, forced labor, for example, in, in, in agricultural fields or in or industry. <clears throat> These misrepresentations or discourses are mostly used by three main uh, st stakeholders. The first one being journalism, government agencies, and non-governmental uh, organizations. While journalists tend to use wrong concepts and, and government agencies, fo uh, well, uh, govern governmental agencies only focus on one type of human trafficking, non-governmental organizations usually are, are the ones with the, that talk about in a wider array of, uh, of human trafficking. But they, but usually they mostly focus on one type of human trafficking, which is the, the, the sex trade or in, in, a, in, in a minor scale forced labor. Uh, these misrepresentations uh, also can be present in in our laws and therefore in the law enforcement process. <coughs> and we, we will see that from the many discourses present in present on these laws, there there is a misconceptualization of trafficking in person as a synonymous of sexual uh, of mostly sexual exploitation. Uh, for the purpose of uh, analysis, we have focused on the 2014 general law to prevent, punish, and eradicate crimes on human trafficking and to protect and assist victims of these crimes. Uh, <clears throat> so. The article that mainly defines human trafficking in Mexico is the Article 10. Uh, I would like you to uh, read this uh, this definition of trafficking in, in, in the Mexican law and tell me what can you see that is missing. Uh, I will read it for you and I, uh, and I would like to see your, your answers on, on the chat. This law defines trafficking in person in its, in its Article 10 as the action of capturing, trapping, uh, transporting, transferring, holding, delivering, receiving, or, or housing one or more persons for the purpose of exploitation. The, the same article also defines exploitation as slavery, servitude, prostitution, and other forms of sexual exploitation, labor exp uh, exploitation, forced labor, forced begging, using minors for criminal activities, illegal adoption of minors, forced marriage, organ trafficking, and illegal biomedical exploitation of humans. So I would like you to tell me through the, through the chat, uh, what did you see that is missing on this, uh, on this definition of human trafficking? Mm. Please, if you please. Uh, th th there's something missing in, in this definition that it's, uh, uh, <clears throat> that is very important to to understand the biases in the Mexican law. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... So don't you think anything is uh, it's missing? Well, uh, if you go to the definition of the Palermo Protocol, uh, this protocol uh, refers to uh, re refers to trafficking as uh, as all, all this array of 
of actions and with the means of exploitation through the use of some means uh, like uh, deprivation of, of, of liberty threats and these means are not present in the in the current Mexican law so that, that, that lacking of uh, that, that lacking of the means uh, that what makes the the concept of of human trafficking in the Mexican law uh, very similar as soul exploitation. Okay, we'll go back to that later. So you, you say it's, it's almost complete, but uh, as I'm uh, as I'm stating so, uh, something missing that it's uh, that, that that is the, the means of coercion in order to achieve the exploitation. So, um, So I, I cannot go forward on the presentation. Allow me a minute, please. Just please allow me a minute. Just, I just had some, some trouble with the presentation. Just, just give me a minute. So, uh, also, uh, okay. Okay, no, okay. the same article also defined, as I told you before that, uh, a wider area of, of, of kinds of, of kinds of exploitations all contain from article 11 to 31 they define uh, a wider array of, of forms of exploitation in which the means are usually contained but it's uh, are, are particularly mentioned on on this kind of uh, of uh, of exploitation so as we can realize, despite driving awareness of the much wider scope of human trafficking, most of the law remains focused on the issue of sexual exploitation, where uh, 12 uh, out of 20 forms of exploitation mentioned on these articles have something to do with sexual exploitation. For example, uh, production of child porn uh, and holding of child pornography and some other kinds or types of activities that do not have to do anything with exploitation. For example, someone that is uh, uh, leasing uh, a place where where some kind of, of, of exploitation is taking place ca can be charged from, from, from human trafficking even when that person doesn't even know uh, that, that, that the place he is le uh, he's leasing is being used with uh, uh, with, with that purpose. 
and that that's uh, where law become really confusing to governmental agencies and and it's uh, and and that's where the biases on its uh, on its informances uh, co come into place <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, in, in, in even when uh, the media slowly is uh, taking uh, more attention, more attention on the on the labor exploitation. Uh, and even when the global report for uh, trafficking in persons indicates that almost 50 percent uh, of the of the reported uh, human trafficking victims are exploited in in some kind of labor uh, the, the the governmental uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the the government is still focus uh, focuses on uh, on pursuing uh, uh, sexual exploitation, uh, human trafficking forms, and that, that that and it's mostly focused on the prosecution uh, of the of the offender, uh, rather than uh, giving attention uh, giving attention and support to victims and finding uh, ways to uh, and, and finding way uh, ways to diminish the the root causes of the of the problem so uh, thank you very much that's uh, mainly all of it and so uh, i wait for uh, for the q a Thank you very much, Armando, for this wonderful presentation on the how the Mexican media represents the human trafficking. So now I'll request uh, our colleague, Dr. Suresh Chandra Murmu, that he to coordinate the session. Murmu, now the Thank you, Professor Acharya. Uh, thank you, Dr. Armando. Uh, for your Informative presentation Thank on you. Uh, representation of human trafficking by Mexican mass media and its complexity in law enforcement. So, so you have touched upon so many aspects uh, like the international scenario uh, of the human trafficking and also the history, historical background of human trafficking in Mexico and uh, how the mass media representation of human trafficking in you know mexico is also influences the policy decisions and public opinion and at the same time uh, the different classifications uh, mm -hmm. the mass media regarding the human trafficking is very well presented so thank you we have a couple of questions from the participants uh, the first one is from Anuradha Mukherjee, and uh, the question is how the Mexican law distinguishes between kidnapping and trafficking. Uh, it uh, cannot distinguish between them. Uh, kidnapping is another type of crime. Uh, it barely mentions kidnapping as, as a mean to achieving exploitation, but it, it, it is another different crime. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. the, another question is from the Sukumar Pal, and uh, the question is Could you point out the different categories of trafficking and how Mexican law is penalizing sex trafficking? Uh, can you repeat the question? Would you point out different categories of trafficking and how Mexican law is 
penalizing such trafficking? Uh, it depends uh, between uh, five to eighteen years, depending on on the type of of exploitation and the context in which such exploitation occurs. If it's a vulnerable, uh, if it's a vulnerable uh, population, for example, child, uh, indigenous, or if a public agent was uh, was involved uh, in 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 such uh, in such case, uh, they get uh, up to uh, 25 years in prison. The thing is that uh, victims are being forced. Uh, to self-recognize as, uh, as uh, human trafficking victims. Uh, so in 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 that case, well, because they not uh, identify themselves as such, uh, mo most of the offenders are being uh, uh, absueltos, and for, uh, forgiven, or 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 the case is not being. Uh, follow to proper uh, termination. Okay, thank you so much for your response. The another question is from the Abel Garza. The question yeah. is, what is your opinion that human trafficking is a special crime or a concurrence of common crime? Uh, it there is a really confusing situation with. Uh, with how uh, or in, in which type of uh, crime uh, human trafficking can be categorized. Uh, the, there is a stated that any crime committed uh, in the organization uh, with the association of four or more people uh, can, will be considered uh, as, uh, as, organized, as organized crime. Uh, there is a law that there is a law that states that human trafficking is a is a form of there, there is a, a law that states that human trafficking is is, is a form of uh, of organized crime but human trafficking can sometimes uh, happens with only one or two people at most involved so th there is also some contradictions between uh, among all the array of Mexican laws that uh, make it even harder to uh, prosecutors and, and and public offices to uh, to properly enforce this uh, the human trafficking law. So they don't know if they must process them as uh, as organized crimes offenders or 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 they even start the case and not, do not consider or do not even classify the case as human trafficking because of those confusions. Okay. Uh, yes, Dr. Mumu. Yes, sir. Can I, can I add something about yes, the earlier yes, question Mr. Kumar Pal? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, please go ahead, sir. Okay. The question was, uh, could you point out different categories of trafficking and how Mexican law is penalizing such trafficking? It's an interesting, interesting yeah. question. Um, well, uh, I have seen in Mexico that you know uh, the the majority of cases the human trafficking is for the sexual exploitation. Okay, so um, I can send you. I can tell you around more than ninety percent cases of human trafficking is for sexual exploitation, and the second category is the labor exploitation, basically for the you know to work in the agricultural sectors. Uh, in the northern border of Mexico, like uh, in, uh, is close to the United States in those area, and there are few cases have documented on the child pornography, and um, you know uh, there are also some cases of organ traffic. <laughs> and it's very that now it is the organ trafficking is growing more. The human trafficking related to organ trafficking is growing more because you know. Uh, it's a that there is a uh, we had a project in the Harvard University in collaborated on that project and that project was uh, you know coordinated by Siddharth Kara. So um, in that project we found that uh, um, 
to get an organ in Mexico, a patient waits at least um, not more than 30 days. Okay. In patients who are treated in the United States, he waits for uh, one week. And that's why I you know in Mexico, basically in Central America, movement traffic is growing related to organ trafficking. And you can see in most of the international media, they have pointed about this one that when they found the you know the dead body, uh, they found it just uh, without organs. So you know it also is a growing crime in Mexico and basically from the Central America and Mexico that you know the human trafficking and, and organ trafficking. So now coming to the, the, the second part of your question that how the Mexican law penalizing such trafficking. The problem is that that's, that's what Armando was presenting. You know, the problem is similar like United States, United States, um, you know, hey, they have. So for example, you know, the media, they used to control in most in, in most of the cases the the the, the penalizing part and uh, you know somehow the mexico has the law and they when you know when they um, uh, come to know that is well the, this person was uh, involved in the human trafficking organ trafficking then the penal they, they penalize up to 60 years of the prison okay it is there the provision is there but how you have to prove that one and that process is a very lengthy process because you know there is so much confusion in the Mexican laws, especially because you know the, you can see the Mex what Marbanda was presenting. The Mexican law is not similar to the Palermo Protocol on the basis of human trafficking, because in Palermo Protocol it is clearly mentioned about the three aspects. That is, you know, when you talk about the human trafficking, the three aspects you have to address. That is the action, means, and the purpose. But in the case of Mexico, they the they have the action and they have the purpose and they miss the means. And that's why you know the lots of confusion created in the in the process of implementation of the the law. So um, you know that that's why you know in Mexico there you can find very few cases of the uh, you know the convicted cases on related to the human trafficking. Or well, when I was in Mexico, it's, it's at the beginning of 2018. At that time, well, at, I think 100 cases uh, related to human tra human trafficking had been convicted. But if you see the you know the process of human trafficking, you know, the the mass of human trafficking, you know every year thousands of men and women that traffic in and uh, out of the country uh, in Mexico. So it's a big problem, but the conviction is very less. So the problem is that you know there is some confusion in the law and the process of implementation. Thank you, Professor Acharya, for your input. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the last question is from Dr. Musi. And the question is, uh, do mass media in Mexico expose the victim of trafficking in such a way that they become re-victimization? Sadly, it does in some cases. There was actually a case of, uh, uh, of a representative, representative uh, member of the parliament uh, that uh, work with a with an NGO, and sometimes they, they did expose former human trafficking victims. They they uh, they did expose them. So. And there's there are uh, so those victims are often uh, violated in 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 their basic rights, even after the they got uh, they got out of the. Of the, of the trafficking situation. Okay, thank you, Dr. Armando, for your you know response to all the questions, and uh, and I also like to thank all the. And, uh, yes, sir. Would you like to say anything, Professor Acharya? Yeah, just uh, just one thing. So, yeah, the query rose by. You know, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Words, sir. Okay, uh, the, the question asked by Dr. Fosikis Mayer that about the how the you know the Mexican media with you know, the role of re victimization, yes, it is there not only in the you know the Mexico, almost in all countries, you know, it's happened that uh, when they come up in most of the cases, 
we i have seen in, in united states in in all, almost in all latin american countries then when uh, the victims come out from the uh, rehabilitation centers you know uh, sometimes uh, when they come across the mass media or the angels they try to portray you know the victims um, yeah, and they try to in the narrate her story or his story and they can try to print it just to expose the how the problem is going on and that's why it leads to the re-victimization re-victimization not in the in most of the cases not they are going again not 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 that they again traffic but in the some cases you know they 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 pull into different kinds of the problems like you know uh, the gender based violence or the stigma the different kind of stigma in the society so it is also going to the re-victimization you know so that's why i think you know uh, we we need to work with the media the the media should the, you know they work in a responsible way how we can avoid this the re-victimization process it's not only um, i can uh, i can assure not only happening in the mexico almost in all countries it's happening and not only in the process of, in, the, in the case of human trafficking almost in all cases like in the domestic violence cases you can also found you can find in the, the in uh, the refugee cases now in many cases it's happening so that you know that's why we have to uh, judge the role of the media you know sometimes the media they try to portrait to get their popularity or they try to you know sell what i i feel to sell their prints but you know where, where is the response to the media no so that is you know there is a very interesting thing and a lot of things have to we have to do on the with relation to media and their responsibility uh, in in this kind of the social problems okay uh, but it is a very very interesting question and i'm sure this type of you know the questions is going to be you know, very, very vital for the future research thank you thank you dr Moon. thank you professor acharya and i would like to thank all the participants who have raised questions in this important discussions and also dr armando for wonderful presentation now over to you sir professor acharya for con concluding remarks yeah yeah th thank you thank you dr murmu and um, i must thank uh, uh, armando for his nice presentation and uh, you know this is one one of the part that we have to discuss and we have to uh, you know to create the sensitization in the society the role of the media because you know i feel the medias like ngos the non government organization the media is a uh, you know the vital part of the society um, you all know all participants must be you know they, they will agree with me you know the in united states the media you know control the the president elections you know the if the media portrait the donald trump then it is sure that the donald trump is going to win so you know the media is a, is a vital part of the society and you know we have to discuss more about the role of the media not only in the in in, in india in other countries also like how they can you know um, plays and vital role uh, to address this kind of the social problem so um, i thanks armando for his nice presentation and um, i thanks our participants uh, for their patience for raising the you know the questions um, on this uh, uh, presentation and tomorrow is the day six of our this international webinar and tomorrow we have an interesting presentation very important and that is uh, we're going to delivered by the dr frustikes meher uh, it's a bijupattai state police academy odisha india and uh, he is going to present on the Government trafficking in India, with special reference to the state of Odisha, and um, uh, my experience uh, I'm, uh, is I can say from my experience I can say you that uh, Dr. Meher is going to present the first and you know the information because he is a police officer and he has worked he has done a lots of work in the on the process of rescue of the victims. So tomorrow's session is going to be very interesting for our and the, the participants. So see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. And um, I hope you enjoy 
this session. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> have, a, have a good day.